welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay Just Jay. Thanks for checking back in. All right, I wanted to get this uh, episode out quickly because I knew this was coming. Um, all right, let me preface this. There are certain folks here on YouTube that I follow. I like the content. I like what they put out. Um, I like their style, the way they do things. Um, you know, I tend to agree with a lot of their takes on things. Okay. Um, and they have been part of the more vocal group of people who have been coming out, speaking out against the abomination that was Amazon's rings of power, um, as well as other stuff like She-Hulk and stuff like that. Um, so I knew it was just going to be a matter of time now that the the season is done that we would start seeing the sort of low key hit pieces starting to come back. Um, it's sort of like round one is over and clearly the fans won the first round. Um, and they were led by these groups of, uh, YouTubers that I tend to follow and I have no problem naming them. Um, on the list is guys like nerd Roddick, you know, Gary from nerd Roddick, um, Ryan Cannell from RK Outpost, um, Shad from Shadiversity and Night's Watch, um, the Geeks and Gamers crew, oh, all of those guys. Um, I tend to fall right in with with their takes on things. So um, I knew it was just going to be a matter of time that even though round one of this battle between Marvel and the She-Hulk uh, showrunners versus the fans as well as the rings of power and their showrunners and marketing department versus the fans well now round one is over and in the case of at least rings of power i can say unequivocally the fans won okay it got ratioed at every turn um and it did not perform according to what Amazon wanted. Now, you will hear a million and one people try to spin it of how great a show it is, and I'm actually going to show you uh, how they're trying to do that. But make no mistake, this show, this billion-dollar show, did not come out of the gate with the easy victory that they had initially predicted. So let's take a look, and now we can see how now they're starting to take the little pot shots because they realize who are the voices that the fans are coalescing around. Um, and so now they're going to start taking pot shots at those folks. And uh, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. This article, the very first one that you see here, this comes from the New Statesman. It's the UK edition. Okay, so this is coming from our friends uh, across the pond. And it says, shows like the Rings of Power and She-Hulk have been runaway successes. Why can't keyboard warriors admit it? Happily, these shows have proven to be huge hits. Wrong. Extremely popular with audiences and critics alike, despite the trolling. Now, a couple of things. First, you notice we're always trolls. We're never fans that are pointing out where the shows are coming up short. Some magical reason that never comes up. We are just immediately trolls or, you know, right-wing or uh, fascist-adjacent um or some sort of ist or phobe never a fan though okay which the reality is that's what everybody is even the people who are complaining about these shows like myself we're fans i'm a huge tolkien fan okay i love the man's work i love what he did with it i loved peter jackson's adaptation even with its subtle differences okay i did not like what amazon did with the rings of power but apparently, that means I am not a fan, I am a troll. So anyway, let's see. Uh, the article then goes on to say, uh, The Great Doom was foreseen from the moment the first trailers hit, the first images were released, and the casting first announced. This will be a disaster. This will end the studio. Fans have had enough. Which show? Basically, all of them. 
Critics on Twitter and YouTube said it about Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. They said it about Disney Plus's She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. And they said it about Obi-Wan Kenobi. And these are just the most recent three. It was said they had been infected by woke agendas, had no respect for their respective source material, and that fans would eventually realize the Emperor would be revealed in all his naked glory. Thankfully, in the case of Star Wars shows, only metaphorically. Happily, all three shows have proven to be huge hits. And again, that is a very subjective comment because, um, and as I'll show you, folks like RK Outpost and stuff have pointed out Rings of Power. No, it literally, it lost 40% of its audience from episode two to episode three. Literally almost half of its audience evaporated in the course of a week, but we'll get to that. Happily, all three shows have proven to be huge hits, extremely popular with audiences and critics alike. Only a month into the Ring of the Rings of Power's run, Amazon executives were claiming that viewing figures were, quote, cresting towards 100 million. Yes, notice how they're saying viewing figures, not people watching it. Viewing figures. What What is a viewing figure? A viewing figure is if I click on it for 10 seconds, and then back out of it and go, oh, no, 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 I clicked the wrong thing. That's a viewing figure. They count that as somebody who clicked on it to watch it. But I digress. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Cresting towards 100 million. She-Hulk has been Disney's top trending show and is regularly in the top 10 streaming shows in the U.S., according to Nielsen ratings. Yes, it was in the top 10 in the U.S. It wasn't anywhere near the top of the top 10, but... Really, you know, you, you didn't have a lot of, like, highly anticipated shows going on right now. You had Brings of Power, you had House of the Dragon, She-Hulk. And, you know, it wasn't doing that hot. Um, also, uh, you know, it being Disney's top trending doesn't mean anything. Disney's top trending, so if Disney doesn't have anything new out that people are watching, it's going to be the only new thing, and of course it's going to trend. Um, according to Nielsen Ratings, in the UK, where the ratings are more easily accessible, a respectable, a respectable 1.6 million were clicking Kenobi. Were, were clicking Kenobi broke records for Disney, achieving the service's biggest ever season debut. Yes, the debut of Kenobi was big. Nobody's denying that. Okay, usually the first debut episode, the premiere episode of anything, is going to be huge. Um, especially for a known IP, like a Lord of the Rings, She-Hulk, Kenobi, stuff like that. It doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way, though. And that's where the the quality of the show will play into it. Anyway, these shows receive largely fa favorable reviews as well. If you ignore the review bombing on Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, again, you only mention review bombing when it's a lot of negative reviews. You don't seem to mention the review bombing of positive reviews, which happens, and we know it happens. But I digress. <clears throat> With Rings praised for its visuals, performances, and for injecting intrigue into a story that few thought had any wiggle room. Who is Sauron became a water cooler conversation. And uh, where? Where the fuck was that a water cooler conversation? I don't know anybody that was saying, who is Sauron and stuff. It was like literally by episode three, you knew who Sauron was. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. And everyone seemed to have an opinion. Mine was wrong, as it turns out. She-Hulk was rightly lauded, lauded for its light tone, its charismatic central performance, fourth wall breaking and smart self-aware jokes with Empire calling its meta finale bonkers reality smashing fun. That would give the Marvel Cinematic Universe its greatest shakeup in years. These aren't cherry-picked reviews and figures. They're a representative snapshot. Bull crap. Well, maybe with She-Hulk. Again, I'm not a big comics guy, so I don't follow that. I, I know a lot of people didn't like the show, okay? I could tell you what the Rings of Power. No, 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 no. Nobody was having those conversations about the Rings of Power. Everything about that show is garbage. You'd think those franchise fans 
that predicted Doom would be delighted. Their favorite properties have new iterations that have been popular and well-received. So why are those same people still calling those shows disasters? It's almost as if people didn't enjoy it, jabs YouTuber Ryan Cannell sarcastically to his 185,000 subscribers of the She-Hulk finale. It's almost like nobody even watched this fucking garbage, even though we know they did. Meanwhile, fellow streamer Nerd Roddick, 577,000 subscribers, was busy having his two cents worth on the Rings of Power. This is a repurposed giant global disaster, he says, of one of the most successful television shows of all times. Here's the thing. Gary from Nerd Roddick is right. Ryan Cannell from RK Outpost is right. They're, they're just right. And you can try and dress it up, but they're just right um you know and then they just go on to of course all art is subjective not everyone is going to enjoy these shows the strange thing here though is that these critics aren't just giving these pieces bad reviews they're claiming them as objective critical and commercial failure failures against all evidence against statistics and feedback it's baffling all right so let's take a look let's take a look um here's the rings of power and you might in a previous episode i referenced this article i think a day or two ago um yes from the 17th i think it was yesterday i, I did a video referencing this and it's about how the nielsen statistics were saying that 71 percent of its audience was 35 years or older and i pointed out this was why this show did so poorly was because they didn't get that 18 to 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 35 18 to, to 34 audience that they were going for, they got a 35 plus year old audience, which were people who had already experienced the Peter Jackson films, had already read the books. They knew what this was supposed to be. The people who like Rings of Power are people that this is their first experience or largely from what I've seen, my interactions with people online, this is their first experience with, with, the, with Middle Earth and Tolkien's work. OK, maybe some of them have had some experience with Peter Jackson's films. The majority of them have not read the books. OK, um, that's why you keep seeing articles from from various different pop culture sites saying um, Sauron's history. You know, you know, who are the Harfoots? You know, you know, what are hobbits? The significance of the three elven rings, because these because the people that are liking this stuff have no point of reference they, they most of them haven't read the books anyway this article from from three days ago also points out something and i'll give credit where credit is due i saw this first ryan canelo rk outpost pointed this out and i had missed it initially when i had uh looked at this article but he pointed it out and he's dead on with this it says the two episode premiere of The Rings of Power was watched by 12.6 million viewers in the US in its first three days. Nielsen confirmed to Insider that the third episode was watched by 7.47 million average viewers in the US in its first three days. What does that mean? That means from episode two of The Rings of Power to episode three they lost 40%, like 41% of their audience. That is not a successful show, people. If you lose almost half of your audience by episode three, that is not a successful show. And credit goes to RK Outpost for pointing this out and these other shill articles like this one that says, oh, it was such a great success. It was so awesome and stuff like that. No, the numbers don't lie. Losing 40% of your audience by episode three does not mean you are a good show, okay? Rotten Tomato scores, audience score of 39%, okay, does not make you a great show. You are not a successful show. Not when you are the most expensive show to ever be made. You should be getting higher than 39% audience score, okay? That's just the reality. And then you see some more follow-up articles 
like this one, which came out of Forbes, I believe. Yeah, this one was coming out of Forbes. Um, the culture war surrounding Rings of Power was more interesting than the series itself. And they pretty much go on to say, to give you a, a history of the uh, the back and forth that was going on between the fans and, you know, the quote unquote mainstream narrative. So, you know, and they highlight some some tweets that people were pulling, you know, saying from, you know, shill sites and so on and so forth and, and as well as some non uh there's nerd rotics you know uh post and, and the man's dead on he's dead on this is not tolkien's work and he's right i agree tolkien would be spinning in his grave if he saw what they're doing to to his work even elon musk doesn't like it so i mean I just wanted to point this out because I knew it was going to happen. Um, I knew they were going to try and now, now that the dust is settled, now that they've realized that round one of this fight goes to the fans, goes to the fellowship, um, that they were going to start, you're going to start seeing the, the, the articles come out with little jabs. And trust me, it'll slowly die down over the next couple of weeks. But as any new popular IP comes out, it's going to be referenced. And then when season two comes out in a year or two, you'll see it'll ramp back up just prior to that. But I just wanted to point this out. Um, I kind of figured it would be coming sooner or later that there would be you would start to see the little taken shot hit pieces. Um, but yeah, no, I'm firmly in the camp with with Nerd Roddick and RK Outpost and and those guys. And actually, they're the ones that inspired this show that I'm doing now. Um, watching those guys and realizing that as fans, we don't have to sit back and take it. We don't have to bend over and crack a smile and just deal with what they decide we're worthy of having. Like we have a voice. We have a voice, and it's it's in here on on social media. And it's also with our wallets. We don't have to support this crap. We don't have to accept what they choose to give us. As uh, Eric July, uh, young Ripper from from the Ripperverse, um, said, you know, we're not obligated. We don't have to accept it. We don't have to play their game. And those guys inspired me to do this. This, you know youtube channel that i'm doing now for exactly this reason so that we have a voice again you know it's supposed to be this is it's supposed to operate with they make good entertainment we become fans of it we support it with our word of mouth and our our praising it and our paying for it and that allows you to make more good content and somehow we lost the plot in this and it seems like the hollywood types the amazons the marvels they think that no we will just give you what we decide to give you and you will just like it because that's what you do and no sorry not gonna bend over and crack a smile for you anymore so anyway i just wanted to point that out um they 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 totally underestimated with the tolkien fandom um we are legion and uh you know, the more they, they keep trying, the more we'll just, you know, you, you rack them up and we'll just knock them down. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Until then, remember to give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment section below, um, hit the bell for notifications and above all else, please subscribe because it does wonders for the channel. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, peace.